my God has made no slave of me. He gave me strength for unity to build a nation black and strong with power to fight and right the wrong. Our goal is to be the church of the future. The 21st century mystery temple. A place where the church is a tool for human development, human growth and evolution, the recovery of black people's humanity and dignity, and a power center for black self-determination. We're doing it in every city that we're in, and we're going to do it in every city we're going to go to in order to facilitate the consciousness raising of black people. Our goal, simply said, is to restore our people to our original place of power and dignity in the world. Amen.
That's why I'll ever praise His name. Oh, yeah. praise His name. That's why. Good morning and welcome to the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church. We are glad that you chose to worship with us today. We are in our season of Advent and today we celebrate faith. Faith in God and faith in ourselves. Faith that God will always be with us and faith that we are capable of accomplishing God's will. The scripture says, if you have faith as the grain of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. I ask you this morning to work on your faith. Ask God to increase your faith. Ask God to be with you. And ask God to guide you. Increase your faith. May we, may we extend our hands for our prayer of invocation. Eternal and ever blessed God, grant this day to the minds that hunger for truth and peace to the hearts that yearn for rest. Grant strength to those who have hard tasks to do and power to those who have temptations to face. Grant unto all within this place the ability to find the secret to your presence and to go forth from here in the strength of you, O oh Lord. Help us increase our faith. Help us to recognize your eternal presence in us and around us. We welcome you into this space to move us, to walk with us, to talk with, talk to us, and to bless us abundantly. Allow your energy to flow freely through us. Thank you for all you do this day and every day. Strengthen our faith in you, Almighty God. We ask all these prayers in Jesus' name. Ashe and Amen. The Black Christian Nationalist Creed. I believe that human society stands under the judgment of one God, revealed to all and known by many names. God's creative power is visible in the mysteries of the universe, in the revolutionary Holy Spirit, which will not long permit men to endure injustice, nor to wear the shackles of bondage, in the rage of the powerless when they struggle to be free and in the violence and conflict which even now threaten to level the hills and the mountains. I believe that Jesus, the Black Messiah, was a revolutionary leader sent by God to rebuild the African nation Israel and to liberate African people from powerlessness and from the oppression, brutality, and exploitation of the white Gentile world. I believe that the revolutionary spirit of God embodied in the Black Messiah is born anew in each generation and that Black Christian nationalists constitute the living remnant of God's chosen people in this day and are charged by him with responsibility for the liberation of African people. I believe that both my survival and my salvation depend upon my willingness to reject individualism. And so I commit my life to the liberation struggle of African people and accept the values, ethics, morals, and program of the black nation defined by that struggle and taught by the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church.
I like this part right here. Come on. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. They sing the something to it just to encourage you we're gonna take you to church later let's go we'll keep marching right until the victory is won all my brothers out there hold your head up brothers till the victory is won all my sisters in the struggle keep believing sisters till the victory is won till that day Brothers and sisters in Christ, we find ourselves in the midst of the holiest days of the Christian calendar, the Advent season. Advent is in the time of joy, love, hope, and abundant expectation. During this special time of the year, we rededicate ourselves to the ongoing struggle to come upon a more transforming experience of God through active participation in the observances, rituals, sacraments, and church fellowship. During this holy season, we worship and pray reverently for the miracle of God's direct intervention into our lives and the affairs of our people. We expect God to touch the inner divinity within each of us so that we follow more fully in the footsteps of Christ in this day and time. Advent is a special period, which includes the four Sundays preceding Christmas. As the faithful of God, we earnestly expect to receive divine blessings, healing, miracles, and increased power as a sign of the messianic fulfillment of the covenant promises. Throughout Advent, we use four themes of reflection, faith, hope, love, and incarnation. Faith is our theme for the first Sunday of the Advent season. Scripture reading from the book of James, chapter one, verses five through eight. Any of you who lacks wisdom must ask God, who gives to all generously and without scolding, it will be given, but the prayer must be made with faith and no trace of doubt. Because the person who has doubts is like the waves thrown up in the sea by the buffeting of the wind. That sort of person in two minds, inconsistent in every activity, must not expect to receive anything from the Lord. People of God, let us go throughout this week striving sincerely to increase our faith in God and in one another. Amen.
Brothers and sisters, let us extend our hands now for our pastoral prayer. Almighty God, we give you praise and thanks for all your goodness and mercy. We thank you for the love that created us and sustains us from day to day. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. We thank you that in your great faithfulness you created us in your powerful image. Strengthen and guide us by your Holy Spirit that we may use this new day and all days of our lives in holiness and righteousness. Grant that we in all our undertakings may always have your glory foremost in our minds. May we always work in such a manner that we expect all results and fruits of our work from your generous hand alone. The peace that comes through faith in you surpasses all human understanding. Help us to keep our faith in you alone so that we would have peace and not falter. You are always worthy of our praise. For guiding us and protecting us, we say thank you. Thank you from the depths of our hearts. Bless us and be with us always. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, Almighty God. Bring healing and closure to their souls. Strengthen them and their families during these difficult times. We also pray for your miraculous healing to those who are sick. Bless our hearts to believe in you beyond the heart's capacity. Strengthen our faith where it is weak and strengthen our resolve to linger in your presence a little longer each day. Take our pain away according to your will in your time. Send your spirit to help us see past our circumstances and onto your calling in our lives. Lord, we know that you have called every single one of your children for a specific purpose and that you have graced us to walk in that purpose. We lift our pastor this morning. We ask that you give him strength and power as he delivers your word. Speak through him to us and may we be obedient hearers and doers of your word. We thank you, Almighty God, for your love and your guidance. Keep us under your umbrella of protection. In the name of the Black Messiah Jesus, our example, we say Ashe and Amen. church. Oh, good morning. Y'all had too much turkey? It should be gone by now, right? But are you still thankful though? Are you? Well, that means then you have faith then, okay? Okay, I'm not getting the right response. Y'all, this morning. Do you still have faith? Do you have faith in God? Do you have faith in anything you do? He can make it all right. Okay, then. I was just checking. Hi. Faith in.
Good morning, brothers and sisters. On this, the first Sunday in Advent, our theme is faith. As we prepare to close the curtains on 2020, if the truth be told, many of us have lost faith, confidence, and trustworthiness in so many areas of our lives. We see this reflected in the skyrocketing divorce rates around the country. If the truth be told, many have lost confidence in the economic system of this country. As the rich keep getting richer and the poor keep falling further and further behind. Some have lost faith in the political system. As the election is still tied up in arguments in the court. The health care system, many have lost faith. Religious institutions and the idea of social etiquette seems to be lost. Brothers and sisters, if this is true, then we must admit this Sunday morning that we are in need of a revival of both personal and collective faith. With this as a backdrop, I want to use as a topic from which to preach the power of faith, the power of faith. Our scripture lesson comes from the New Testament epistle to the Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 6. And in the Living Bible translation, we find these words. You can never please God without faith, without depending on him. The epistle or the letter to the Hebrews is dated around 64 CE. The writer, who most biblical scholars say is unknown, addressed a distressed and discouraged people who are feeling both the strain and the tensions generated by the policies of Emperor Nero. A Nero, uh, during his time and his reign in office, it was marked by tyranny and debauchery. Nero was so wicked and so evil that he had his own mother killed. It is in this cultural context that the writer of Hebrews seeks to encourage the community to cling to their faith. Brothers and sisters, faith in the letter of Hebrews is defined as a firm confidence regarding what is being expected, the proof of what is not yet seen. I stop by to remind somebody that faith is so important. Why? Because it reminds us that we can win. You see, faith determines the stories that we tell ourselves we, we have to confront life's challenges because we all are going to have to go through some challenges. But faith allows us to control the narrative that we tell ourselves while we're going through. You see, faith allows us to stay true to what God has called us to do. Here it is that faith allows us to say, I may not know how this thing is going to turn out, but I do have enough faith to take the next right step in a direction to change my conditions towards God's will. Faith strengthens us to escape the plans, the plots, and the policies of our enemies. A faith, brothers and sisters, is the gift that comes with expectations. Expectation is the propensity to believe that we can and we will accomplish whatever goals we set, both personally and collectively. Here, here it is that our ancestors exercise faith and work towards freedom, even as they face the dehumanization of slavery, even as they face the backlash of reconstruction, even as they face the horrors of Jim Crow, and even as they face the, in the inequities uh, of segregation. In fact, according to Dr. Riggins Earl Jr. in his book, Dark symbols, obscure signs, God, self, and community in the slave mind. He talks about the importance of faith in this way, and I quote, Faith in oneself is necessary for a successful escape from slavery. Converted slaves reason that having faith in God equaled having faith in themselves, since it was believed that God worked through them. End quote. This kind of faith, this deep, visceral type of faith, 
led our ancestors to look back over their struggles and look at how far they came and allow them to see from a very deep place. We've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, to have faith in God, to have faith in Jesus, meant that our ancestors had to have faith, confidence, and assurance in themselves. This was true for our ancestors then, and it's true for us today. Having faith in the human spirit is what drives us to survive and transcend. Having faith is really what makes life worth living. Faith gives meaning to our lives. Because without faith, the mind can easily slip. I wish I had a witness right along through here. Right into depression and despair. But we must remember that faith is embodied in our neurons. It is, it is part of our gene makeup. And it is one of the most important principles to honor in our lives. Faith, brothers and sisters, is a deal breaker, but faith is also a game changer. The Bible records that it was by faith that individuals were able to do the will of God in relationship to the needs of the communities to which they were called to serve. These sisters and these brothers acted courageously for God doing tense and uncertain periods in the history of their people. Here it is that Noah was called to build an ark over many years at a time when it seemed pointless to do so. Yet his faith kept him obedient to what God instructed him to do. Elijah on Mount Carmel had one of the biggest showdowns in the Old Testament. He was up against the prophets of Baal. On Elijah's side was his faith in God. But his faith proved to an entire nation whose God was the true God. You remember that bleeding woman in the, in the New Testament. She had incredible faith. After 12 long years, she still believed that if she could just touch Jesus, she could be healed. And she was. But I believe that nothing would have happened for this sister if she did not have faith not only in herself but also faith that Jesus could make a difference in her circumstances. Queen Esther had courage and faith to approach the king on behalf of her people uninvited which guaranteed her death but her faith gave her the strength to go before the king in order to save her people from Persian persecution. These are examples, brothers and sisters, of the power of faith. Faith is so important that our scripture lesson tells us that we can never please God without faith. Never is a very powerful and descriptive word that marks time both forward and backwards. In other words, never means not today and tomorrow doesn't look good either. What the writer is conveying to the community is this. The writer is conveying the importance of having optimism and expectancy, even during uncertain and difficult times. If they were to follow God and not be engulfed by their circumstances, it would take faith on their part. Can I get a witness this Sunday morning? Just like it takes faith on our part. Because without faith, we will be engulfed by the realities that we face. They had to have faith. They had to be able to reach deep into their storehouse of assurance and confidence. That no matter what Nero did, that the final word did not rest with them. Uh, can we be honest this Sunday morning? It's not always easy to feel confident at all times. Uh, let's be honest this morning. It's sometimes hard to be optimistic all the time. Uh, can we be clear and transparent this morning? It is hard to expect miracles when mess and mass suffering is all around you and anxiety is raging on every hand. There, there are days when the glass looks half empty if I had a witness here this Sunday morning. We have all experienced moments 
of disappointment. Moments where our faith started fading. But it was in that moment that we heard the voice of God declare unto us. And if you are here this Sunday morning, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because even in those moments, you began to realize that you were dealing with some dark days. But in those uncertain dark days and uncertain moments, in those times of confusion and contradiction, that's when you remembered that you were wired to win. You heard what I'm talking about? That you began to go back and pay attention to what God promised. God promised never to leave you nor to forsake you. You began to turn your attention back on your personal goals and your life ambitions. Because your life ambitions always have communal benefits. What allowed you and what allowed me to turn around? I'm glad you asked. It was our expectation, our faith that helped us to see a better future that didn't make sense given our right now reality. But that's what faith does. Faith reflects our neurological propensity to believe that we can win and we will accomplish our goals. We can and we will go through difficult cycles in life. We can and we will create better communities for the next generation. We can do this. Faith helps us to do that even if the situation that we're going through right now doesn't match up. Why? Because faith governs our neurological mechanism known as the placebo effect. You know about the placebo effect where patients are given uh, medication, but they're told they're given medication, but it could be something as simple as a sugar pill. You say, oh, that placebo or something, I don't really believe in it. Well, however, I want to remind somebody this morning that 30 percent of the patients who receive a placebo show major health improvements. If you believe strongly in something, in other words, if you have enough faith in yourself, you will stimulate both your immune system and your motivational system into action. I'm talking about the power of faith. Faith is powerful. The scripture says that you can never please God without faith. You remember Jesus said it this way to the disciples. If you had the faith the size of a mustard seed, they could tell the mountains to be removed and thrown into the river. And it would be done. Mountains moving, brothers and sisters, is simply a metaphor. To point to the reality that serious problems like hunger and depression and economic underdevelopment and political strife and mental illness all have solutions if we are willing to address them. But first, we must possess the confidence, the faith, and the assurance that we can not only address these issues, but that we will also be victorious in our efforts. Uh, come here, Marcus, and, and help me kind of press this point. Marcus Garvey spoke of the importance of faith or confidence in this way, and I quote, If you have no confidence in self, you are twice defeated in the race of life. With confidence, you have won even before you have started. That's talking about the power of faith. And I don't know who I'm preaching to this Sunday morning, but your problem isn't you don't have talent. Your problem isn't you don't have enough resources. Your problem isn't you don't have great ideas. Your problem and my problem is not that we can't get in the room or a seat at the table. Our problem is rooted in the area of faith. It's rooted in the area of confidence. And it's rooted in the area of assurance that God has created us to be problem solvers. The Bible asks a serious question that I want to lay in your lap this morning for your consideration. The Bible asks this question, O ye of little faith, why did you doubt? Well, well, I woke up this morning with an answer. It got dark. That's why we doubted. Friends got few. That's why we doubted. Sickness came in from nowhere. That's why we doubted. God went silent when we needed to hear from God the most. 
That's why we doubt it. America went crazy. That's why we doubt it. But I stopped by to tell somebody, even though we doubted, just before we almost gave up, we had to consider what the Almighty had already done and what the Almighty had promised. The Almighty promised that we would not have a, a, a problemless journey, but the Almighty promised that we would have a safe arrival. Dr. Fowler, in his book, Stages of Faith, The Psychology of Human Development and the Quest for Meaning, Reminds us that growth and development in faith results from life's crisis, challenges, and the kinds of disruptions theologians call revelation. Each of these breeds disequilibrium and requires changes in our ways of seeing and being in faith, end quote. Is there anybody here this Sunday morning who can testify that? You've been through some stuff in 2020 and, and it has tested your faith. And what you have discovered is that you are now leveling up in the area of your faith. The scripture says you can never please God without faith, without depending on him. Faith can also be defined, brothers and sisters, as the ability to trust our beliefs, even when we have no proof that such beliefs are accurate or true. You say, how, how does that happen? Well, meditation will help you strengthen your faith. It will help you strengthen your faith in yourself and people and in God. Researchers have found that highly optimistic people had greater activity in the same parts of the, the brain, the anterior cingulate, that region of the brain is stimulated by meditation. That's why our ancestors would say, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus and the devil can't do me no harm when my mind, when I'm meditating upon God and the goodness of Jesus because faith tempers and taps down our fears and our anxieties. Faith will require us to take risks. In 1845, Frederick Douglass published what was to become the first of his three autobiographies, the narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass, an American slave. Douglass escaped from slavery in 1838 from his slaveholders in Maryland and ran to New York. Writing this book was dangerous because Douglass's freedom had not been purchased yet. However, Douglas declared himself free and he declared himself independent internally long before his external reality caught up. This took faith and courage on his part. Jeremoji Abebe Ajiman, our founder, Reverend Abbey Clegg Jr., Marcus and Malcolm and Betty Shabazz, all these brothers and sisters, they had faith and they had this inner assurance that transformation and liberation and self-reliance was not only possible for our people, but they understood it to be the very will and the very intention of the Almighty. I'm talking about the power of faith. The power of faith was on display during this past election cycle, where over 10 million young people between the ages of 18 and 29 voted in the middle of a pandemic. They voted not because this system was perfect. They voted because they felt they had a civic duty. They had a divine obligation to those who came before them to exercise their right to say something about how this country would be governed. We have an obligation to act with courage and faith. Change occurs, brothers and sisters, when we take small actions daily. And we can all do something every day to make conditions better for our community. This church, in fact, exists as a community seeking problems to provide answers. And I want to let you know this morning, whatever disturbs you or gets under your skin or rubs you the wrong way, well, that's your assignment to correct. I'm talking about the power of faith. Faith, brothers and sisters, is embedded in you. Courage is embedded in you. Optimism is embedded within you. 
expectation and expectancy is embedded in you. It's in the very fabric of your being. What we must decide is what are we going to do today and tomorrow that will be pleasing to our God. I'm talking about the power of faith. Tyler Perry had faith and confidence in his own ability, not only to control his destiny, but also to control his movie rights. In 2015, Mr. Perry, Perry purchased 330 acres of land on a former racist and segregationist military base right here in Atlanta, known as Fort McPherson, built in 1885. Today, Tyler Perry Studios, the brother who is a descendant of Africans enslaved in this country, owns land that once was a military compound. He calls the shots. His name is on the front of the check and not the back of the check. I'm talking about the power of faith. James Weldon Johnson asked us to sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. In other words, tell the story of how we came through. Tell the story of how we got over in the face of heartaches and trials and disappointment and death of loved ones. But we never stop believing that one day we would be free. Our ancestors had faith. Our mothers and our fathers and grandmothers and grandfathers and uncles and aunts had faith. They had courage. They had determination that even if things didn't turn out as they wanted in their lifetime, that the work that they did, they laid the foundation for the next generation. We ought to be able to do the same. That's why our ancestors could sing the song that, 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 that Satan, we're going to tear your kingdom down. James Weldon Johnson asked us to sing a song and to tell the story of the great cultures of Kemet and Nubia. Uh, he told us to sing the songs and tell the story of the African kingdoms of Songhai and Mali and Ghana that has social structures and government systems that served as blueprints for the rest of the world. I'm talking about the power of faith. Again, faith is embedded within you. Courage is embedded within you. Optimism is embedded within you. The expectancy of great things is embedded within you and within me. What we must decide is what are we going to do today and tomorrow that will be pleasing to our God? This, brothers and sisters, is the power of faith. And the scripture reminds us, without faith, you can never please God. Without faith, you can never please God. But I stop by to remind somebody, you are wired for faith and you are wired to win. God bless you. Keep the faith. Brothers and sisters, if you're visiting with us today and have been so moved by the Holy Spirit to become a part of our spiritual fellowship dedicated to the righteous struggle for justice, dignity, and power, you're invited to simply click on the Join button on our webpage, www.shrinesoftheblackmadonna.org, and submit your request, and one of our regional pastors will reply to you. Our Best Self movement is open to all who seek unity, healing, transformation, and empowerment within and across the Pan-African world community. And once again, we thank you for visiting with us today. Brothers and sisters, we come now to the time where we act upon our practice of self-determination, which sustains the many institutions of the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church. The Shrines of Detroit, Atlanta, Houston, our cultural centers, the Beulah Land Farms Incorporated, PAOCC Liberia, all were built upon the sacrificial giving that makes cooperative economics more than just an ideal, but a dream realized. 
Your financial support helps to keep our ministries in every region of the country relevant, transforming, and productive. As you donate today, make your tax-deductible donation by credit, debit, PayPal, direct deposit, or by check to the P.O. Box of your local region. Thank you for your sacrificial giving, which reflects the self-giving of our standard bearer, Jesus the Black Messiah. May God bless you for your tithing gift today, and we thank you for your continued support. Faith is the first factor in a life devoted to service. Without it, nothing is possible. With it, nothing is impossible. Mary McLeod Bethune. As a religious movement, we are entrusted to pass the baton of faith and self-determination through social and spiritual liberation from generation to generation. As one of the 2018 recipients of the Reverend Nkenji Abi's Sister of Promise National Book Scholarship Award, I am humbled and excited to pass the baton to this year's Sister of Promise to Sister Niari Minifield. Sister Niari is a freshman at Georgia State University, and she's the granddaughter of Shrine Nine's Elder Oni and the late Brother Siddiqui Minifield Oluremi. Sister Niar was born into a family of educators who fosters her love of learning, asserting that the great aim of education is not knowledge, but action. It is through her community, community service work that Sister Niara discovered her passion for sign language. She, she also believes that everyone has the responsibility of giving back. She wants her legacy to be that she is a teacher's teacher and that her ability to help others through sign language communication is socially and spiritually transforming. We salute you, Miss Niari Minifield. Azuka. Azuka is a West African word that means support is paramount. This award reflects the remarkable life's work and academic contributions of Elder Dr. Rubin and Dr. Nakiyalti Warren. This year's Azuka Leadership Scholarship is gifted to Sister Joyce Ingram, an exemplary young woman who positively influences her community. With over $475,000 in scholarship offers, she chose Xavier University. Sister Joyce profoundly internalizes that belief that she must be the change she wishes to see in the world. She decided at a very young age that she's a chosen one and that her mantra doesn't originate from a pompous place. It's from a stance of self-determination that compels her to serve and uplift the lives of African-Americans through various therapeutic mediums while addressing the stigmas of mental health. We salute you, Miss Joyce Ingram. As I pass the baton of self-determination, I do so again with the words of the renowned educator, Mary McLeod Bethune, I leave you to love, I leave you to hope. I leave you the challenge of developing confidence in one another. I leave you respect for the use of power. I leave you faith and I leave you racial dignity. Good morning, church, and welcome to Shrine of the Black Madonna number one in Detroit, the Mother Shrine. I'm Brother Takuma, and I'm here this morning to honor our annual scholarship program. As you know, the pandemic has made it hard for us to do a lot of the things that we have done this year, but we are still able to provide a scholarship through our scholarship program. This year, we are honoring Kanya Ziegler with the 2020 Major Kokai Book Award for $1,000. Kanya recently graduated from Renaissance High School, where he played trombone with an emphasis on classical music and jazz music. One of the things Kanya did in his community was he sponsored community cleanups around Renaissance in neighborhoods where some of the kids or students might leave trash around. So he was a leader in his community. He's volunteered with the National Business League, which used to be the Booker T. Washington Business Group, where their focus is on supporting black businesses around the country. Kanye's role was to pour libations at the group events. He's been doing that for five years. He participates in Kwanzaa at the Charles Wright African American Museum proudly opening the event on the first day, describing the Kwanzaa principles 
and uplifting the program by lighting the candle on the first day. The Detroit Free Press wrote an article when Kanye was 12 years old. That's how long he's been doing this. And I'm going to quote from the article. For the start of the week-long holiday honoring African culture and heritage, the 12-year-old Detroiter reflected on Kwanzaa's seven guiding principles, unity, self-determination, collective work and responsibility, cooperative economics, purpose, creativity, and faith. Kanye said, learning about my culture is very important to me. It helps me know what the African people as a whole went through to get where we are today. Brothers and sisters, we come now to the presentation of the Ida Abaney Johnson Scholarship Award. It will be presented today by our own sister Harriet Askew, the sister of Abaney Johnson. Greetings, Bishop and Bayou and Shrine of the Black Madonna, Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church family. I am here to represent the Abaney Ida L. Johnson Musical Scholarship. This year's recipient for the Abaney Ida L. Johnson Music Scholarship will go to Kanya Daniso Ziegler. Kanya, will you please come and receive your $1,000 award? Um, I would just like to say, first I would like to say thank you to Sister Harriet. Um, and I would like to say thank you to Abaini for all the things that she's done for me. Um, when it comes to music, she has done more for me than I would say a lot of people have. She supported me throughout my pursuit of music. When she found out I played trombone, she was one of the most excited for me. And she always asked me about it and how I was doing with it. I would also like to say that for all those who still are grieving for her, I feel it with you. And thank you for allowing me to be the one to receive this scholarship in her name. Greetings. Welcome to Community News Across the Nation. If you're interested in doing your part in the liberation struggle of black people, then get involved and join our best self movement. Visit our website, shrineoftheblackmadonna.org, and hit the join button. For current events and relevant information, visit, like, and follow the Facebook and social media handles of the Shrine Cultural Centers and Shrines of the Black Madonna of the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church. We invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Shrine Online. Give it a thumbs up. Tune in to our weekly virtual programs. The program guide is located on our website homepage under Latest News. Let's stay connected. The Shrine serves the needs of our communities with weekly free food services in our local regions. Volunteers are always welcome. Support your local Shrine Cultural Center and Bookstore. Atlanta will operate holiday hours through January 9th, Fridays and Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. Houston continues the Buy Black Marketplace every Saturday through December 19th. Teach your dollars some sense. Buy black and support your local bookstores. Celebrate with your Shrine family during the holiday season. Send your creative greeting video wearing your holiday attire for the Festival of Lights by November 30th to shrineonline at gmail.com. All regions, join in today for our virtual coffee hour and please, Remember your sacrificial Advent pledges. Thank you for your continued support. Have a blessed week and stay safe. Thank you everyone for being with us this morning. We hope that you will join us again for another series of our Advent. In our series next week, we will be on hope. 
May we now extend our hands for our prayer of benediction. May the strength of God sustain us. May the power of God preserve us. May the hands of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. May the love of God go with us this day and forever. May our faith continue to increase. We glorify your holy name. Thank you for all the blessings you have bestowed on us. Guide us through your wise counsel to share them with those in need. Keep our faith strong in you and in ourselves. We ask all these prayers in Jesus' name. I share and amen.